Hi there! Today we're going to talk about reptiles, and what actually makes an animal a reptile in the first place. Let's say I asked you to tell me the traits that make a reptile a reptile. Well that's easy, you'd say. A reptile is an animal that has scales and is cold-blooded. Alright, now let's say I ask you to name me all the different types of reptiles. Well that's easy too, you'd say. Crocodilians, turtles, lizards, and snakes. You might even say tuataras, weird little critters that look like lizards, but really aren't. Now, those are both good answers, but unfortunately, they were both wrong. So what does reptile really mean? The truth is, it doesn't really mean anything. Reptile, as it's used today, is a vernacular, not a scientific term. It's used to describe a group of animals that have a handful of traits and needs in common, but that don't really form a valid phylogenetic group. Let me explain what I mean. Even though reptilia is a legitimate taxonomic group, it's not a synonym for reptile. This is something that even Wikipedia gets wrong. If you look at this phylogenetic tree, you'll see all the animals he listed. Here are crocodilians, here are turtles, here are tuataras, and here are lizards and snakes. But wait, there's still one group left. Birds. For those of you paying attention, this is the answer to last video's cliffhanger. That's right, the closest relative of this guy is this guy. Not any of these guys. Reptilia can essentially be separated into three groups. Chelids, which is made up of turtles and tortoises. Lepidosaurs, which is made up of lizards, snakes, and tuataras, which again, look like lizards but aren't. And archosaurs, which includes crocodilians and birds. By ignoring birds, reptiles becomes what is known in taxonomy as a paraphyletic group. A paraphyletic group is a grouping of organisms that has been bundled together despite skipping over related organisms that should really be included. This is a big no-no when you're trying to work out accurate phylogenetic groupings. So what this comes down to then is that birds are reptiles. They have to be if the classification reptile is going to mean anything at all. But if birds are included, the term doesn't really apply to the animals we want it to. So what's a zoologist to do? You'll often hear scientists refer to non-avian reptiles. This is a sneaky way to get around the reality of reptile phylogeny. The interesting thing is that the three groups have some things in common with some phylogenetic branches, but not others. For instance, Lepidosaurs and Chelids both have three chambered hearts, while Archosaurs have four chambered hearts. Meanwhile, Archosaurs and Lepidosaurs are both diapsids, meaning they have two openings on the sides of their skulls, while Chelids are anapsids, meaning they have none. And as you all know, Lepidosaurs, Chelids, and Crocodilians are all ectothermic, or cold-blooded, while birds are endothermic, or warm-blooded. So here's how they all fit together. Lizards and snakes make up the group Squamata. They, along with Tuataras, make up the group called Lepidosauria. Archosaurs, which includes birds and crocodilians, along with Lepidosaurs, make up the group Diapsida. Diapsids, along with the anapsid group of turtles and tortoises, finally make up the group Reptilia. I hope you're still with me. If you are, now you know that birds are really reptiles and that maybe animals aren't always related exactly the way we think they are. Created using Powtoon!